All righty. I can admit everybody in. I'll let them know. I'm going to let them know via chat that I will. I will admit. Okay. All righty. Okay. Let's see if our live feed is up. Our live feed is up, live chat. One of these days you have to teach me how to do all this. Oh my goodness. I got, you know, I can bring the youth to teach you. <laughs> you <laughs> you know, do they, they set me up. I can let the youth that I work with, they can teach. All right, we look good. Well, We're you set good. up a time with them because I need to know. Yes, yes, ma'am, definitely. Need to know. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Let's get okay. this intro started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to I, thought you all knew. I Am Your Host, Tyrone Bridges. Let's get it. Test, test one, two. Welcome. Welcome to I Thought You Knew. We have a very, 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 very special guest on our show today. The mayor of Ypsilanti, the Honorable Lois E. Richardson. Say hello, Lois. Hello, everyone. All right. On this beautiful summer, spring day. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and speak with you quickly about what's going on and also what are you running for? What are you rerunning for? Let's talk to them about your uh, campaign and uh, what you're running for currently. Okay. Um, well, let's back up a little bit. I want to just let people know that I came in to office uh, when the former mayor resigned. So I've been mayor since June 23rd of 2020. And um, it's, been, it's been a real experience because basically for two years, um, we were in lockdown. We were in, a, during, in COVID. So it was very, very little um, movement outside. Uh, I am running for the office now because I have some, some things and some ideas that I would really like to uh, get across to um, and get done here in the city. And uh, Tyrone, if I could start with, I have, uh, had a lady that sent me some questions. So if I could just start with that. Feel uh, free, go ahead. Okay. The time is yours. Okay, uh, what she said, her question was, when elected to serve as mayor, one, what are your top priorities? Two, what will you do differently than you are now? Three, how will you work differently with council members? And four, how will you engage citizens for productive change? And my answers to this lady is one, enhance community and economic development to bring in good paying jobs and affordable housing that is not predominantly HUD sponsored. Most of the time when people hear um, affordable housing, they automatically think of HUD housing, but no affordable housing and what I want to see in, out in affordable housing is housing that is both attainable and sustainable. Housing should not, and this is what the people that supposedly know say, that our mortgage or our house rent should not take up more than 30% of our income. That is affordable. And sustainable is when it even your mortgage doesn't keep rising to take you out of that place. That that 30% that goes for the mortgage, that leaves you 70% to pay your utilities because you got to have utilities. It's for groceries. You got to have groceries and some, and your kids are going to need shoes and the wife is going to want a new dress every now and then. And you want to go to the show sometime. So we, I want to see us with affordable and sustainable housing. And I believe one of the ways to do that is through development. We have some prime property here in Ypsilanti that the city owns for some. And for some, the, there are other people that own it. 
but I believe that we need to begin to deal with the owners of that property that's sitting there. Take Motor Wheel, for instance. Motor Wheel has been empty and gone for a number of years, but yet the factory and everything is still sitting there. Why can't we really search out and bring in a developer, either someone that would want to come in and start a new business that would be of a factory site uh, type, because it would bring in job. I would like to see development that we can um, uh, say on Water Street, that the contractor, the, the overall general contractor that we hire, that he would hire contractors that are right, uh, that are local. And I know Ypsilanti does not have a lot of contractors, but we do have some good black contractors and uh, countywide, just hire countywide contractors and that they be committed to hiring Ypsilanti residents right, right off right. so that our people can get jobs. And if they get jobs, then guess what? They won't necessarily need affordable housing. Right. And I remember just to quickly jump in real quick. I remember that uh, when we, uh, me and another fellow, we had actually did some protesting when Hamilton Crossing was coming together. And we was protesting because we wanted uh, black people, local people hired. And uh, from my recollection, from conversations that I had with Mr. Foley, Brian Foley, he actually benefited from our, our fruits of our, our protest. So I, I really support that idea. You know, when you hire within, hire in the community, then you, right. you could sustain the community better. I, I really appreciate you speaking about that. You can go ahead. Right. And I was very much active with that at the time. Mr. Uh, John Barfield was, and he, um, he sponsored, um, he pulled together, helped us pull together a list of the black and female contractors in this area. And, uh, and we pushed for that. And there were some black contractors that uh, got there, Mr. Foley, but also I believe uh, Guy Huddleston had uh, with heating and cooling, mm -hmm. he got a contract there. There was a, uh, excuse me, a black female business that they hired there. So I really believe that, um, I just believe that, that that we need to do that. And if people are hired with union jobs, union paying jobs, uh, then they're going to be okay. You know, uh, if, although the pay has come down some, because I guess now Fords and some of the automobile factories are hiring people in at $14 an hour or $15 an hour, not at the rate that they were before, but there's still some benefits that they get that offset that and with those with what they're being paid many are being able are enabled to buy a home i remember just uh just last year my niece although she has a uh degree from eastern she works uh i guess at, I, it's not vision anymore and i don't know all the names that these factories and, and have changed to but she's at the saline plant Mm -hmm. that was for then this year and she was able to buy a home for she and her son you know uh so those are the kinds of jobs that we want it doesn't have to be all factory jobs but if we can get these contractors and the con and i would like to see many of the contractors that are hired that they be across the board in ypsilanti but also a uh, minority because our minority contractors need to be built up also so that is uh, one of the things. But, um, and then the second question that she asked, I think I read it, but the answer is, um, what would I do now that if, if the elected mayor that I'm not doing now, I wanna be citizen centered. Tyrone, I wanna focus in on the people and what people want and what people need. So many times, Things are just done and people find out afterwards. And I especially want Blacks in Ypsilanti to know and to bring them in and to get them involved so that something they don't feel like something's being done to them. No, come out to the meetings. I'm always encouraging people and trying to encourage people, come to council meeting. You don't like what's happening? Come to council meeting. I have one vote. And you might, you and I might agree, 
but I only have one vote on council. But if you come to council meeting and pack the council house, you we might be able to sway some other council members our way. That's but right. come get involved. But I would love to be more involved with um, more involved with um, with the community, uh, with the citizens. I want to spend more time, especially now that. And I won't say that COVID is gone. And here I always like to quote Debbie Dingle. Debbie Dingle has a saying, she says, we're done with COVID, but COVID is not done with us. That's and true. it's not. And when I'm saying this, I want to admonish everyone. Don't take your mask off, wear your mask. I, took my, I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago and I took my mask off to take a picture with, there were five of us taking a picture together. And guess what? Five days after the conference was over, all five of us had COVID mm. simply from taking our masks down. I well, don't know I'm, if all of them had our masks, but for taking my mask down. Well, I'm glad that you're seconds. okay. I'm glad that oh, you're I'm doing good. okay. I'm good. Yes, right. I am good. But I would not wish it on my, my worst enemy. If you have ever had a sinus sore throat from your sinuses draining and your throat is sore, mm -hmm. the sore throat that I had it was like on steroids 10 times over. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, I couldn't swallow. So I don't want anybody to go through that. And we don't have to get your vaccines, take your booster. And I had all of that and wear your mask. But I let my mask down. Don't let your guard down, people. It's not worth it. Yeah. You know? That's so, right. And Lois, I wanted to right quick jump in right quick. You yes, had uh, somebody join in with us uh, that I'd like to bring in. Um, okay. If you don't mind, this is uh, Drew Crosby. Crosby, hello, hello. Introduce your your guests and. Uh... Okay, this is Drew Crosby. Crosby, and I met Drew. Uh, Drew was brought in to a group meeting that. Um, Derry Jackson and I were hosting, and I really want to talk about that, Tyrone. Um, and Drew uh, works with the rub rugby, um, I don't know, rugby group here in the city of Ypsilanti. Mm -hmm. And they were meeting there at Park Ridge, hoping to get uh, people of Black men of all ages to join the, uh, the rugby, um, their rugby club. I did sit, I had never seen her rugby before, but I did sit in on a game down at uh, Riverside Park. And uh, they do have some black men on their team, but rugby's a rough sport. Hey, I'm, I watched it and I thought, mm, you know, but so if you nobody, anybody that's interested in rugby, even our young young boys, it's, it would be something new and different. Um, I have a nephew from the UK. Um, he's actually, he plays rugby. Yeah, so I definitely I know exactly what you're what you're saying. Um, definitely, uh, Drew. Can you say say a few words, or you just want to be silent? You you don't have to have your your uh, your video on, but you like to say a few words and uh, dip in, dip off. Yes. How are you doing, Mr. Bridges? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Glad you could join us. That's Tell us about you and and what are you in relation to Miss Richardson here. I am uh, Miss Richardson's campaign manager for her reelection purposes, All and right. um, and I was just calling in to just uh, to listen, and that was really about it. I was going to let her mostly speak on it. Um, as far as involvement in um, the city of Ypsilanti, I am on the anti-gun committee as part of the um, with my firm Freck and Wong. We do um, we do analytics um marketing branding kind of the whole scope of those things and i also am there on behalf of the ypsilanti rugby team that i'm the director of um helping to not only get the word of the sport out but to also offer especially during the summer a sporting opportunity for young men and women in the city including right. high school excellent yes so thank you for uh, allowing uh allowing us to be on your program today my pleasure, my pleasure. I'm glad to meet you. And uh, Lois, you want to take it up from here? Yes, I do. Um, just want to finish being citizen-centered and listening and, and addressing priority concerns and issues. 
and haven't been able to do that because of COVID. I wanna be a com uh, being a community builder. I wanna to work towards building more consensus on council and with staff. And uh, I'd like to set up um, council co conversations with council members if they agree. And number four, I wanna be more inclusive, more community town halls where we all come together in person when possible and virtual if need be. And I want more interaction with the businesses and faith community. Tyrone, we have got to come to a place of unity here in the city of Ypsilanti. I don't know if you were aware, but I, uh, right while I was, we were still in um, lockdown, I uh, formed a race and equity. Uh, we call, ended up calling a race and equity task force, but, but it was an open forum for people to come. And unfortunately, the opportunity index was released from the county at the same time. And I believe I heard Justin Hodges talking to you about that, mm -hmm. that showed how the disparity between uh, in Washtenaw County, uh, between the Blacks and the Whites and Ipsy and Ann Arbor and all. And so it kind of got sidetracked so that we weren't able to have real open conversations about, um, about racism here in the city. Um, and I think we need to have that conversation openly. We do. We do, because we, we want, I want to see unity. I want to see us come together. You know what, Tyrone, some of the stuff that plagues Ypsilanti, it doesn't have to be. If no, we would doesn't. just come together and work together. No, it does. Work together. You know, it's not just me. I can't do anything by myself. That is, that's the way, that's the way God made us. That's you right. know, when he made, and well, I'll leave that alone. Okay. All but right. anyway, um, we need to work, you know, we need to work together. But if I may, I want to switch now to something that is really near and dear to my heart. And it's the uh, violence intervention team. And uh, Drew just made reference to that. And that was where I said I met him last year. And I'm not sure if you were aware of it, but I worked with this group from Alabama. We had Zoom meetings because the young man, um, there was a group of uh, found life, to, life fountain, fountain of life foundation. And the young man in charge of that, his name is Lane Harper. And he was from this area. He wanted to come back and do something for the area. He is a police officer in Alabama, young black man. And so he came and they, we had a, uh, they brought over a thousand backpacks to give away to our kids. They gave them, we ended up settling on giving them out at the fire station there at, um, in, oh gosh, Superior Township. However, um, we were at that event and I mean, they had food. It was just lovely. There were uh, people driving through to get the backpack. Some were out, they were dancing, some were walking through and it just hit me. Lois, I looked around, I saw Jamal Buford with my brother's keepers. I saw Derek Jackson with the uh, community outreach at the sheriff's department. I saw Anthony Williamson, I saw Shamar from Michigan Works, I saw any number of people right there that were somewhat involved in youth or youth projects here in the area. And it was, this was a couple of days after our Sean Evans had gotten killed. And my heart was really, really heavy. His dad and I have a very special relationship and I, my heart was heavy and it just hit me. We got all these people working with youth but guess what? Kids are still getting killed. So something needs to change. And so I just felt in my heart, bring us all together so that we can begin to do something and not do stuff siloed, but work together. And as I approached each of the young men that were there that day, they said immediately, yes, there wasn't any hesitation. 
And we tried to meet that Monday. This was on Saturday. They were ready to go on Monday, but a few people that needed to be there. And I think somebody had, uh, Derek, I had another appointment. So we began to meet on Thursday and we have been meeting since last August. We have a 14 point plan to help intervene in gun violence. We know that kids are still getting killed and everything, but we have, it's a plan that is almost identical with the Council on Criminal Active Action, which is a federally funded uh, council. We have all had, uh, before we even talked with them, and we just need, we've been rolling it out. Uh, the county has promised to give us some money, and we've been rolling this out slowly. We went to the uh, county commissioners and presented, and they committed some money to help us with it. We're gonna be rolling it out to the city of Ypsilanti on June the 7th. And it would I would love it very much if you would have uh, Derek and I, or just Derek alone on your podcast to talk about this plan because we're working with the Supreme Felons and already we have seen there uh, some things happen. One of the things that they have done, and we have reports and documented reports that they have stopped X number of shootings and killings already since last August. And just by being out there, they know the language, they know how to reach the, the kids and tremendous things are happening. We have a grief group in that. So that in that grief group goes is when there's someone in, gets shot or hurt, the grief group uh, goes immediately to the family to try to help with the grieving process, whatever we can do. We have We Live, and these are people, some of them Supreme Felons, that when somebody's shot and they're in the hospital, they go immediately and begin to uh, work with that, with the victim, and also, if possible, with the perpetrator. And part of the reason for this, Tyrone, is that we can stop retaliation. Many of the murders and many of the killings and the shootings are because of retaliation. So if we can stop that. So there's some other plans, uh, but I really wanna work. Um, that's one of my main focuses right now. When we get that truly up off the ground and going, we have people going into the detention center, working with those that are detained there along the grief. Grief is different for everybody. Everybody do, grieves differently, but yet there are some basic things that that help as people going through the grieving process. All so right, let, that, let me jump in yeah. right quick, Your Honor, sure. because we're we're 22 minutes in the interview, and I don't want it to be a complete interview of you reading off the sheet of paper without respectfully talking about a few elephants in the room, in which I've actually spoke about on my show recently. Uh, there was a shooting in the city of Ypsilanti at Joe's Market where I spoke about it and I emailed, you was, in, you was included in the email chain. Um, to the chief, to, okay, the chief of, chief of police had an email chain with, uh, with us and I was trying to get some information so I can bring out to the public because there was a shooting that happened in front of a driver and two young kids in the back seat. The driver, unfortunately, had to drive the victim to the Ypsilanti Police Department. And I'm not sure if the young man died there or if he died at the hospital. But my question is to you, posing to you real quick, let's not be a long question because, a long answer, because I want to get a few of the questions in okay. that I have as well. Um, right. What would you do? differently within our law enforcement in Ypsilanti, city of Ypsilanti's leadership? What would you do different or what changes would you potentially make with a law enforcement that has, that we have had a shooting within the Ypsilanti in, our, in, in broad open daylight, in broad open daylight during school hours? This is very legit in front of two kids where the victim was driven to the Ypsilanti Police Department. And we get nothing on a suspect as of now. You know, Tyrone, I will not 
uh, dispute that we have some problems uh, with our Ypsilanti Police Department. It's, we don't have the problems that some other departments have, but we do have some issues. And I have been, been pushing for some change there. And I will continue to push. All of what you just told me was not in the report that I received, okay? And sometimes we, unfortunately, sometimes our reports, they're better, we get better, receive them better now than in the past. But some of our reports, we don't get them until the next day or two. And I know there was another, and this really hurt my heart during the pandemic there was a murder suicide with a baby, four month baby in the room. And I did not get a report of that at all. The only way I got the report was the lady from Safe House called me and said, why was there no press release? So when I pushed for a press release, why there wasn't, the answer I got, well, one, the, the chief was out of town and the lieutenant that was there chose to not Really, that is unacceptable. You said it, it is totally you unacceptable. Said it. You said it. You said it and, before I did. Yep. And I am trying. You know, some things take time. I get it. And, and we don't always have a lot of time. I get it. We don't have a lot of time, but I do believe that we have enough time to do yes. whatever that is set before us to do. This is and true. I, but believe me, that is high on my agenda. Okay. To make I, changes there. I thank you. I thank you very much. Yeah. The other elephant in the room that's been uh, displayed on M Live, of course, everybody know M Live. You got to pay for their news, so uh, <laughs> our our news is free. Uh, M Live has spoken about the city of Ypsilanti ending in the deficit. The words were on fifteenth in the article, Ypsilanti set to end the year with a budget deficit, and it says the first time in six years. First time in six years. The numbers is on the M Live report. I'm not giving M Live pub, right. but we were we are asking the question about that elephant in the room. What right. would you try to do? And I know you you just you said once before you are one vote, but at the same time under your leadership, right? And uh, uh, what what can you speak to the public about how you're going to address that uh, with your plan? Okay, uh, Tyrone, um, some of that deficit came about because of COVID. You'd be surprised how much money the city, not enough to cover the whole deficit, but how much money the city does receive from parking, from tickets, and from just from people coming into the city and shopping at businesses, doing business with our businesses and all, how much that actually brings in. So with those two years of shutdown, yes, it did deplete our budget some, but Ypsilanti's budget has been, if you go back several years, even beyond the six, we have been on a, a path where we've been really struggling to stay. The passage of the, um, the Water Street millage certainly helped us. If we could get rid, and it has certainly makes the, brings in what we need to, to keep up with the payments. And thanks to our, um, to our lobbyists, uh, Kirk Prophet, he certainly helped us. And when uh, with our for, one of our former um, city managers, Mr. Lane, Mr. Lane, he was a whiz at cutting uh, budget, but at the same time, not cutting employees, not ma making you know, uh, not really bringing about a hurt. But we have been on a tra trajectory for some time to have a deficit in our budget, okay? And it's just hitting sooner than we thought it was going to simply because of COVID, those two years. Those two years, and for me, those two years are just crossed out. You know, it's just like right. they weren't, 
people ask me, well, when did you just do such and such and such? And I have to stop and I say, oh, a couple of years. And then I have to stop and say, no, because two years were crossed out. So I have to go back from 19 as opposed to going back from uh, 22. So uh, yes, the budget and finances is high on the list. And I do um, plan on working with, um, with council and staff to right. help make a change there. And um, hopefully we can do something. All right. To bring and, about uh, a change. Yeah. Also a small, well, I ain't gonna say a small elephant in the room, but not very much talked about elephant in the room, uh, Water Street. Water Street fell on y'all lap. And uh, it would be a, 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 a bad thing for me not to mention Water Street. What uh, can you talk to us about Water Street and the development or the potential development on Water Street? That's a big headache for the city residents and all yes, the taxpayers. Is. And right. uh, <laughs> go ahead. It's a big headache for me because Tyrone, you know, just as I was first going on council, that was when the city had was just finished and buying up all of this property. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the room when our attorney told us that the developer was pulling out because uh, the ground was too brown to build on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you I, I looked over at one of my council members and I had heard the expression red as a beat, but I'd never seen it. He literally was as red as a beat. Mm -hmm. And I really, and all I could do was say, oh God, please don't let this man have a heart attack in front of me, please. You know, but it was, that was a big hit to the city. I, Water Street is number one on my list. We have got to find some developers, but again, we're going to have to work together. And I know that we have, I am for affordable housing very much. I started out talking about that attainable and sustainable, but we cannot expect a developer to come into Water Street after paying $30 million or seeking and finding $30 million to keep clean up the property and then have 50% or 60% of their, the houses that they build affordable. It can't work that way. The developer has to make some money to, to replace the money he spent out for, for the cleanup. So we have to, as a city and as residents, we have to come to an agreement that yes, we need affordable housing, but we also need housing, housing stock. Housing stock, Tyrone, is way down in the city. It's almost like, you know, you can't find a place to live. True, true. You know, Honor, I, have so, to, I have to wait. I want to throw this quick since we on Water Street. And I think Water Street technically has been in Ward 1. A lot of people don't know that. Water Street is a Ward 1 parcel. It's, it's, right. it's a part of Ward 1. So the development of Water Street should, should benefit the poorest communities within the city, including majorly Ward 1. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that too, like, wow, no, that could have been developed and they could have been doing some money with that. Doing right. something with that money. Right. I have... Uh... I have been constantly pushing for development on Water Street. And that's really pretty much number one on my list. And I will continue to push for, uh, for uh, development there. Developing Water Street would most definitely benefit Ward 1. Developing Water Street will definitely also benefit the city. And if the developers follow my plan, to hire local contractors and hire local people, many of the people working on building those houses on Water Street might be able to buy one of them. I'm with you. I'm with you. And you I got know. another, I got another one. And this is perfect right along to what you're saying because I love it. We got another property that's on Spr off, off Spring Street. And currently we have Amazon using that property for storage of their trucks. 
Now, let me get, let me continue. Not mm -hmm. only that, we do have Chrysler trucks, if not, if not Broncos, I didn't see them on the other side. My question proposed to you, your honor, and this would be a good thing to put in your campaign as well. Is there any type of way that we can talk to Amazon management, maybe even Chrysler management, and possibly get them to offer some locals jobs? Because it's almost like this. You putting all of this good stuff in Ward 1, Amazon trucks, people coming from and going to get those trucks and driving off doing work, and you got all these poor people all these low income people up in Ward 1, up here looking at all these beautiful trucks. And a lot of people may even be qualified to drive those trucks. And it's almost like you, you got a golden fruit that's right down the street and we can't touch. And I'm a baby from the townhouses and I ride by there constantly. And I said, it would be beautiful if we could get Amazon to hire you using our hood, hire in our hood. You using in our hood, you're parking your vehicles, you're bringing your, your trucks that may be leaking, accident trucks that be over there, they repair trucks over there. You got some competent mechanics that will fix those trucks in Ward 1. You also got drivers with great records that you can find that satellites up there at Michigan Works to drive those Amazon vehicles. Your Honor, forgive me if I'm sounding too loud, but you already understand what my passion is, honey. Let Amazon stop boo-booing on us because hire some of these kids up the street. These young ones that's coming out of these schools that's ready to work, or even the young ones that's coming out of the court system that you can, you can put a tag on them and follow them and follow them into success. Amazon need to be a more of a, 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 a doer in our community and not a user in our community, as well as Chrysler or Ford. I had not thought of that. There you go. You gave me something and I, I wrote it down. Breaking I news, y'all. Thank That's you so my much. Sister. <laughs> thank you so much. And, and I will follow, I will follow up on that. One of the things for uh, about that property though is last year I was approached by uh, someone and I, I'm not at liberty to disclose Don't even do it. Approach me or whatever. Don't but even share. About, re, um, about developing that property also. Uh, and the person, you know, the people that talk to me about it, they would be able to, they're in a position that they could, you know, buy it and develop it. And it would be um, just a, a wonderful development for Ward 1. Your Honor, and that would be Ward beautiful. And it so, would be beautiful. The reason why I said the, the Amazon driver, and I'm speaking to these young folks that's in Ward 1, in the city of Ypsilanti, period that are door dashers, uh, Grubhub drivers, Instacart drivers. I mean, I do door dash. And you're killing your car just for chump change. All I'm saying is the olive branch is so close to helping us foresee those, those visions and those futures that you have in mind with affordable housing. Because if, if, if a lot of us young folk, I call myself young, you know, I mean, I. I call well, it like you are yeah. We you drive. Know you know what, Tyrone? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I went to the funeral in January of a lady that was 104 years old, and her mind was better than your mine and yours together. Yes, her body just gave out. Yes. I went to a funeral two, three years ago to a lady that was 108, and her mind was as good as ours. So yeah. you, anything less than 100 to me is young. So hey. that's right. That's right. And so we go, we go, we, yes, ma'am. We're going to give a shout out early. Matter of fact, we'll probably put that on a special plug to Amazon and Chrysler because you always want us to come into them factories and you got stuff right here, right next door right. to us. Now, I would like to ask you, would you be willing to um, serve on a committee with me to approach Amazon and Chrysler before uh, you put it out on here? Where do I sign? 
Okay. We will <laughs> yes. work on it. Yes. I will call Double yes. And I my producer can be a part week. of that as well. Who That's is that? Right. My producer to the show could be a part okay. of that as well. We definitely trying to get these young folks uh, uh, in some decent jobs. That's it. That's it. Right. If you get them in decent jobs, they'll stop thinking about crime. Like they my will. grandma say, an idle mind is a devil workshop. Right. But look that here, if we bored, we ain't got no boys and girls club. We don't even have a bowling alley. We have a community center, but Park Ridge is, grown, is outgrown big folk. You know, people that's over, what, 18, 19, 20 some years old. You know, we need a big place, a bigger right. Park Ridge. Right. You know. Right. But uh, kudos to all those brothers that's doing great things in the community, especially Anthony Williamson up there. We go back. And uh, I appreciate you even mentioning all the things that these young brothers out there doing. But we got to stop. We can't, we can't have a lot of folks uh, coming in our city with all this high crime going on, with all this these shoots, right. Uh, right? A message, a message from the mayor to these young folks. Uh, Your Honor, please give them a message and talk to these young folks about shooting and killing each other. And let's how how we need to grow together instead of that. All right, speaking directly to the young people out there. Stop it. Nothing that you can be angry about or that upset about deserves for anyone to shoot and kill someone else. I know from a message I heard way back in the 80s when there began to be a rumbling and a, a, a young people began to to, to uh, rage at each other and, and gangs were, were violent and raging. First of all, I, I want everybody to know I'm a minister, licensed and ordained. God let this man of God preach a message that all of the rage, and there were lots of young people in the room, that the rage that they were feeling and experiencing it was to have been directed at the enemy, the overall enemy. The kid next to you in school is not your enemy. Your next door neighbor is not your enemy. The kid down the block is not your enemy. And just because he got a pair of Jordans or whatever is in now and you didn't, that doesn't make him your enemy. That's right. And because your cousin got shot, you don't have to go out and shoot up the killer's the shooter's house, killing babies, innocent people. You don't have to do it. There is a better way, working together, coming together. And I know we get angry, but that rage that you have, and it's legitimate rage, and some of it is because there is no rec center. There is no bowling alley. There is nothing for us to do. And it's not just in the city of Ypsilanti, but it's in the whole Eastern half of Washington County. One true. of the things we wanted for Water Street and we, the Ipsy, the city crossed every I, dotted every I and crossed every T and the county was ready to do, put in a water, a, a map, a upscale rec center right down there on Water Street, and all of a sudden, they pull back. Don't know why they pull back, but we know that you need something to do. And one of the things that's in my list is one of the things that the, the violence and uh, interruption intervention team is doing is working on trying to get a recreation center or something for you to do. But stop the killing. You know, your lives are precious. You don't know, you know, I just had a sister two years ago die from cancer. I know some of you out there have had the same thing. Some are dying or some are, are, are ill with MS. You don't know that that one, that young man or young woman that you just killed or the when you by, went by and shot up the house, that baby that was inside that was killed. You don't know whether they had a cure for those diseases or not. You don't know what the potential that they had. And I'm saying to you, you got so much potential. Stop blowing it by, by getting angry and wanting to kill somebody. Stop it. Stop it. It's not worth it. Your life is more, worth more than that. 
And, and I'm sorry, heard, I didn't mean to get that's all right. Y'all heard I'm the sorry. message from our mayor, our great mayor, Viv Chilani, Lois E. Richardson. Look, we definitely want everybody to know how to reach you, Your Honor, how to support your campaign, what they can do to get in on your campaign. I'd like to also uh, let you know that somebody is in the waiting room. Uh, should I bring them on? Uh, maybe they can help uh, help with your inf the information on your, uh, your campaign. So y'all feel free to go ahead and talk about the campaign real quick. Talk about how to support her and talk about what uh, we could do uh, to get the message out there. Okay, and Tyrone, I just looked at the name of the person uh, that you just let in. And this is a, a darling of mine. This is my pastor in Kansas City, my father in the gospel. This is his youngest daughter. Okay. Hi, Maya. Good, glad to have you here. Hello. But I was... So happy to be here. All right. I support Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I will, I will give you my email. And my email is reelect mayor Lois at gmail.com. Again, it's just simply reelect mayor Lois at gmail.com. And there are no um, there are no spaces there. And I'll spell it out R E E L E C T M A Y O R. L O I S at gmail.com. And my Facebook is reelect, and that's re with a capital R, E with a capital, elect with a capital E, dash mayor hyphen Lois dash Allen dash Richardson. And some people ask why the Allen? because that's my maiden name. And I've had people in the past say, Lois, I didn't know that was you. I know you as Richardson, I know you as Allen. So I have added back my maiden name in there, Lois Allen Richardson. So, but you have both of those and you can reach me on my, my cell number is very public, is 972-3673, 972-3673. Nine seven two three six seven three. And Tyrone, I want to thank you so very, very much for for this time. Just to talk to you, it's been a long time that you and I have really just had a, a conversation and talked about things that we need to do. Yeah, and I'm yeah. so excited about you being willing to meet with me to help work uh, and approach Amazon. You and know, I if always, we you know, I answer, answer your call every time I see your number pop up. I answer. Yes, Definitely. you do. Yes, you do. And, so and thank to, you like very I said, much. we got some bright people here. Y'all want to say anything? Uh, did we miss anything, Drew? Young lady, did we miss anything? Did we miss anything? Would y'all like to say something? Go ahead. Feel I, free. Don't, I don't believe we did. I think the mayor showed her her level of passion that she has for solving the, the issues that we're facing here in Ipsplani. Indeed. We, the unity message is really what's going to bring us all together. We can't we can't do this with one person, one group. It's much like all the other problems in the world. They it has to be a coming together and not necessarily compromise, but a cohesive front to taking care of these problems. There's not there's not a magic pill that is going to solve the issues that exist here. So the bringing more people into the political fold, into the decision making getting more people out to vote um, and especially having more contribution from the young people that definitely are the loudest. Uh, Mayor Lois was a part of a um, meeting with, with um, Educate Youth where we talked with the, the young people of the city of you know what they wanted to see out of it. And they definitely have opinions and we want their opinions to show up to the polls and we want them there so their voices can be heard. So that would be my personal challenge to the 18 to 24 range, but the we'd love to definitely see them out and supporting the mayor because we got a lot of good plans going forward and we're excited to see where it goes. All right, great. Thank you. Ma'am, would you like to say something as well? Unfortunately, I came in on the tail end of things, but 
I've known Mary Lois almost my entire life. And so I've seen the work that she's done in the community and around the world. And I've been a supporter of all the things that she does. So I was just jumping on here just to be a support for her because I know what she does has so much meaning and purpose and that I'm strongly supporting behind her. So, thank yeah. You. Thank you for chiming in, definitely. Thank you so much, Imai, and thank you, uh, Drew. But Imai, it was so surprised when I saw the name, but thank you so very much. And I've known you all your life. <laughs> all right. I remember holding you as a little bitty baby. But yeah. uh, Tyrone, if I may, I don't want to be remiss, and we would be remiss if we did not mention the three things that are going on. One, the war in Ukraine. People are, that's a really uncalled for, unwarranted, unjust war. Yes. And people are dying. Uh, it's beginning to fade in the news now. And when things fade out of the news, things sometimes can get worse. The other thing is we need to uh, remember Buffalo. And as I said in a statement that I read at council the other night, Blacks, Brown, and Jewish people, we have targets on our back. That young man drove 200 miles specifically to kill Black people. Those people went to the grocery store not knowing that they had a target on their back, but they did. Right. But we need to be aware that even though things got better in this nation for a while for black people, they have gone right back to where they were. It was never completely uprooted. We have got to begin to truly work towards uprooting racism, uprooting white supremacy that springs out and grows out of racism. And it both of them ultimately come out of hate. We have got to try to some way uproot the hate out of this country. And last Uvalde, the school, we gotta do something. There is no reason for an 18 year old to be able to go into a gun shop and buy two AR-15s and ammunition when one, he's not old enough to vote. He can't rent a car, he can't drink liquor at 18. So why should he be able to buy a weapon that was meant for war? We as a people, and black people, brown people, Jewish people, and white people, we have got to come together and stand strong and demand that the people in Lansing do something about the laws here, gun laws here, and that the people in Washington. And you know, we pray, but we gotta put some feet behind those prayers. We have to make some good trouble. That's right. We definitely right. have to make some good That's trouble. Right. That's shake right. some, shake some doors, shake some rooms, and shake some campaigns up. Your Honor, it's been a pleasure. It's been Thank a pleasure you. to meet you two beautiful folks, and hopefully this is not the last time because I want to bring you back on after the election, and uh, we'll continue on from here. Thank you one more time Thank for you. coming on. I thought you knew, and uh, you guys have a beautiful night. Thank you so much for having me. And it was so good seeing you. And thanks for the time before we got started. I appreciate right. you. And know that I love you, Tyrone. I love you too. Love you too also. All right. All right. Y'all have a good day. Thank now. you. Bye-bye. Right. And Bye -bye. remember.